Travis Wayne Goodsell. Made some adjustments this morning. We'll see if it's more convenient for me as time goes by. As time goes by. Perfect song in the description below. As time goes by. I brought it out in my video that Missouri is a trap. And thinking about it this morning, I'm realizing how much of a trap it is. As uh, history tends to repeat itself, and the enemies of our nation that seeks to overthrow it and establish a kingdom, king men, free men from the Book of Mormon, sound familiar Mormons? So why do you want Jesus to establish a kingdom rather than a constitutional republic of Mosiah? You didn't catch on to that? And so, yeah, I know that it's only a Mormon myth for you as you're not watching my channel and learning that the church is going to get their kingdom back. And so, as I've been doing videos about Joseph Smith, that's what it's always been from the beginning, was I learned Joseph Smith is a translator. Legitimately a translator. Scientifically based translator of Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian, beginning with the King Follett Discourse. Not the Book of Mormon. Joseph Smith had nothing to do with the composition of the Book of Mormon. But that's the whole point. I did research on the church. I know that critics have a whole bunch of books that they rely on as biblically true. It's all false. Nobody seems to understand how to do research. Science based research. People just trust whatever somebody wrote in a journal. And if they are pro-church, they promote it. If they're anti-church, they promote it. So you have Mormons encouraging the lie and ex and former Mormons complaining about the lie. And so this is the distraction that the church is setting up for you to get you fighting about the lie and never coming to a knowledge of the truth. They've released the Joseph Smith papers how many of you from both sides are looking it up? Do you have any clue of the changes that are needed to the Joseph Smith history? Specifically the second vision. Do you understand what it means to have those changes put back to its original form? See, this is where research is required. And so with the latter days, Mormons believe it's the second coming of Jesus who's going to murder everybody and get his kingdom back. Critics and former Mormons say Mormons aren't Christian. That Jesus isn't coming for you. Christian Jesus is going to smite down the Mormons instead. You're both wrong. Cut it out. <laughs> My God's better than your God. My God can beat up your God. 
You just always find an excuse to complain so that you miss the big picture and the threat to your lives specifically. That's what the church wants. And so, the real history that pertains to this. 9-11-1826 Joseph Smith Sr. is helping William Morgan with the book to expose the threat to overthrow America. They find out about him and they threaten his life by having him arrested. It is the duty of the Master Mason to protect his brothers. And so, Senior is responsible for helping William Morgan flee the country to save his life, but take on the responsibility to make sure that the book gets published. And so thus, why Sidney Rigdon is the major author of the Book of Mormon. He's way out of the picture. Nobody knows of the connection. And thus why he got baptized in December. It's because they needed plausible deniability of a connection. And arranged it so that missionaries gave Parley P. Pratt the Book of Mormon, who then goes back to Ohio, shows Sidney Rigdon, and Sidney Rigdon goes, oh, great, let's join. And then Sidney Rigdon gets paid. Upon joining, Joseph Smith immediately has him work on payment. If you understand that he left Alexander Campbell's church over a dispute over how to retranslate the Bible, Sidney Rigdon wanted to redo the whole Bible so that the prophecies meshed with the New Testament. And uh, Alexander Campbell didn't want to do that. He just wanted to redo the New Testament and went on to do so. Sidney Rigdon? No. He can't do it on his own. He needs help because of the accident that he had younger on in his earlier days, as told by his brother or his son. I think it was his brother. <coughs> And so the Book of Mormon is not literal history. It says it's not literal history in the book. And so that doesn't make it a fraud if they confess that it's not literal history. Ex-Mormons. <laughs> There's a message in there. That's what you're missing. And Mormons miss it because they think it's literal history. That's the trap that Brigham Young set for you. Because Brigham Young was in the missionary department. And brought in the enemy to the church. I've done the videos. I've done the research. I've shown you. There's so much evidence of this. I've got 2,000... 900 plus videos probably getting closer to 3,000 now but uh, I just denialism is the most evil of communication just because you don't believe something doesn't mean you're right when all you have is a belief. Do the science-based research. Don't just trust somebody else. And so, 1838, that's the coup of the church. It failed, sort of, because Joseph Smith got out of Liberty Jail. That's only why it failed. And so then they had to plan his murder. But with the 1838 coup, 
you have election fraud from a headquarters that is a secret combination. They use the name of the secret headquarters as Adam on Diamond. Joseph Smith didn't go there. He didn't designate the name of the place. All of those documents from the Joseph Smith papers reveal that they are forged by the Danites. And I've done the research on this. I know where I'm talking from. This isn't an issue to be argued with. Your denial will cost you your life by the church. This war began with election fraud. In that war, the leader of the church is gone, and it's cooed. Brigham Young takes over his 12 and assumes authority for the whole church. The extermination order occurs. The only good Mormon is a dead Mormon. These are the historical patterns you need to pay attention to. And then you have Joseph Smith running for president. He comes out and says the Hebrew text of the Bible was, was mistranslated. And so what does Brigham Young do? He creates a counter-government, the Council of Fifty. He's no longer talking about Joseph Smith going, running for president. He's plotting the overthrow. He pays the 30 pieces of silver to the Warsaw Lodge to have Joseph Smith murdered. Make sure his guys are there. Joseph was ex escorted by Danites and then Brigham Young's stooges were left behind to make sure it was done. And so Mormons know about Missouri, the return to Missouri, and the council at Adam on Diamond. The day that shall burn as an oven is about Mormons. That's what the whole second vision is about, Mormons. Joseph Smith took the prophecies of the Bible and said, hey, they're now applying to Mormons. It's going to be you guys that are going to fulfill it. And so the day that shall burn as an oven, that's you. They that come shall burn you. Joseph Smith added that. He knows of the threat and he's warning you. He just wants you to hearken. And so, with the destruction of the day that shall burn as an oven in 28 days, Mormons will then be thinking, I guess we go to Missouri. Because you didn't read through the Joseph Smith papers and find 19 July 1840. Joseph Smith says, nope, not it. Southern Illinois, where X marks the spot of the signs in the heavens. And so Mormons will go to Missouri. Mormons around the world will hear of the destruction, hear that survivors are going to Missouri, and boom, automatically they're going to go, I need to go help and support them and go to Missouri. This is it. The church is going to be true. Jesus!
and you don't get it. It's an extermination order, not just a holocaust. You will be gathered to Missouri to be executed. In the United States will fall as the church will likely step in to confront the United States and go, you didn't protect us. We demand restitution. We demand religious freedom. We demand land, probably say Missouri, to rebuild. And if the United States gives it to them, oops. If they don't, now yeah, they've already got it set up to destroy the United States. But the church being targeted for this attack will claim martyr victim status. And with the United States falling, so too will fall the rest of the world. If it's just the stock market, that will collapse the economy. That will crash the stock markets around the world, crashing the economies of the world. Descending into chaos and violence, the enemy nations who are already preparing for war will then commence the war. North Korea against South Korea, China to Taiwan, Russia will finally use nukes and chemical weapons on Ukraine. Well, they've already been using chemical weapons and they were told not to do it because that's the red line that they cannot cross and they crossed it and yet nothing was done about it. Because everybody's afraid of the Sisters of Fatima prophecy. But when America falls, all hell's going to break loose. And the church is involved with this. They've already paid for it with your tithing money. They used your insurance money for the day that you'll burn as an oven against you to burn you. You will be the sacrifice so that the church can claim their kingdom. Because they're failing to get the religious freedom movement passed so that they can claim the whole state of Utah as religious and thus be exempt from the United States laws. And so yes, they have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. If the one doesn't work, they go on to the next. If they get one thing pushed through, then they escalate it. They take it a mile. So this is the warning. And the majority of you are not listening. So despite my warning, but that's the whole trap. I see it. So. I don't want to do videos. I have things to do for my own plans and preparations for 28 days from now. But when I get an inspiration to do a video to warn you, I guess I have to do it. Even though you don't care and you don't believe and you deny. And then you spew hate and you want to murder me for trying to save your life and thus fulfill all of scriptural prophecy of nobody believing the prophets.